Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and today is Labor Day weekend in the United States. It's Sunday, the 6th of September, if you can believe it, in the year 2020. And I am broadcasting from beautiful Escazú, Costa Rica. And we've got lots and lots and lots of things to talk about. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is some blatant self-promotion. I am giving a class. It's called Opening Your Heart with Astrology. If you follow me on Instagram at The Golden Astrologer or you get my newsletter and you're on your mailing list, on my mailing list, you know about this already. And I had to change the date. I was supposed to do it this Tuesday, but more people could make it on Saturday. So the class will be Saturday at 10 a.m. my time, but noon Eastern daylight time. So it's going to be noon Eastern daylight time on the 12th of September for 10 consecutive Saturdays. And I expect that it's going to be a good time because already the people who have joined and were talking on email about what kind of tools I'd like them to get, um, we're all getting very excited. So uh, one of the things that uh, we're going to discuss in the class is how to open your heart using the astrological aspects you have in your, ch in your chart, mostly to the moon and Venus. Um, how the outer planets affect your astrological planets and are affecting how you open your heart. We're going to use such rituals as doing things in nature, stuff with essential oils. Um, we are also going to work with meditations. And so there'll be some assignments and things, and there'll be some tools I'd like people to get for this class. So if you're interested, please contact me, info at thegoldenastrologer.com, or have a look at my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, and go to Astrologer's Thoughts, and the most recent one is about the class, and it describes everything that we're going to be doing, and there is a link to sign up there. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's 90 minutes every Saturday from uh, the 12th, of September onward for 10 Saturdays. And uh, I really welcome you to join us and it's going to be great. So that being said, um, on also Saturday, the 12th of September, I will be a guest on the Pass the Lotion podcast again. So I did this a few months ago with my friends, Whitney and Drury, Drury Penn and Whitney Howard, and they were great. We had a wonderful time. And so I am joining them once again, and it will uh, broadcast next Saturday the 12th because their podcast broadcasts on Saturdays. So we're going to talk about all sorts of things like the election and like how to handle the astrology for the rest of the year and why 2020 has been so intense. So uh, they are lots of fun. We'll be using some examples from Jury's chart like we did last time. So I, I hope you join us. It's past the lotion and you can find it all the lovely places where podcasts are distributed. In the meantime, we've had some planetary sign changes. So yesterday, Mercury went into Libra, and today, Venus went into Leo. So these are compatible signs. Mercury and Venus are talking sweetly to one another. They are really in a, a good relationship, and it's nice to know that uh, Venus is now in a fire sign. So we got a little more fire in the sky and Mercury is in an air sign. So even though Mercury loves to be in Virgo where it's been these last bunch of weeks, it's, it's was still Earth. <laughs> and, you know, Mercury loves Virgo. Mercury rules Virgo. It's good in Virgo, but it's also good in Libra because it's an air sign and we hardly have any air in the sky so it's good to have air in the sky because then there are words then people can have discussions and conversations and and contact one another and have um, dialogue and uh, with all this water and earth there's just been so much earth it's it's so practical we we need to dream a little bit we need to be thoughtful we need to be aesthetic and that's what libra does and and mercury going into libra yesterday evening is or yeah it's late afternoon um 
Eastern time, we, we really got a good sense of how to um, be, you know, more uh, communicative and effective in our communications. So we're going to do that for a bunch of weeks. And Mercury is going to be going into, you know, staying in Libra, traveling through Libra for a while. And, you know, it's a cardinal sign, so it's going to affect all those cardinal planets in Capricorn, you know. Um, but that's not till later in the month. Let's not worry about that now. Let's just enjoy the fact that we can speak about art and culture and aesthetics and design and beauty and, you know, Mercury in Libra is going to focus on beauty. And so maybe you want to beautify your home. Maybe you are having conversations about art. Maybe you're, you know, and it's, these are good things to do, especially with what's going on in the sky. You know, there's so much of that Capricorn and, and in our world, it's been so complicated and, and difficult and, and it's, you know, it's been hard for a lot of people. And so this gives us a little more of a lift. Mercury in Libra answers to Venus. Venus is in Leo as of this, after, this morning, very, very early, wee hours, 3.22 a.m. Eastern time. And so that's a whole other thing because Venus has more va va voom in Leo because Leo is sexy and Leo is fiery and Venus gets to be fiery and and glamorous in Leo. And that's really a wonderful thing. And we, we love a little glamour in the sky. So the good news is that Mercury in Libra is answering to this Venus that's happily in Leo. They talk to each other smoothly because Libra and Leo are compatible signs. And Venus gets to like be playful and enjoy herself and buy some pretty things and and we're going to want to buy some pretty things. So if you're in the mood and you've got a little cash, buying some pretty things is is really fun right now. So even if you're a guy, you need to like maybe jazz it up a little bit. Don't be afraid to buy some pretty things, beautiful things. So and that's what this is. We're looking at some beauty. We're looking at feeling beautiful, wanting to be beautiful, um, having an experience of beauty in our lives. And, you know, with all of this, you know, wearing masks and, and covering our faces and not being able to see if someone's smiling and not being able to, uh, connect with people socially because there's so much isolation still, there's there is a lot of um, um, culture and liveliness and sociability with Venus in Leo and Mercury in Libra. So people may, like, if they want to be social, they've got to go out and start being social. People have to do things to be social. So absolutely. Um, we we should connect with people more. And that's one of the reasons I'm giving the class too, because I want people to connect from their hearts. So, um, so the thing is, um, we are now moving into the Mars retrograde phase. So Mars is stationing and Wednesday, Mars retrogrades, 6.23 p.m. Eastern time. So in the evening, dinner time or so. And we really have been kind of waiting for this. And one of the one of the positive things about this is that it's in its own sign. So it's still dignified. It's still in a good place in the zodiac, even though it's retrograde. And Mars retrograde can be a royal nuisance. Why? Because Mars is an active action taking sign and it's not a, a plant I mean planet sorry it's in an action taking sign Aries it's Mars and Aries is action taking and so Mars likes to take action and it's not like it, I think it would be harder if Mars was in Pisces and I've experienced those retrogrades Mars and Pisces were and they just feel like you don't want to get out of bed you just want to roll up curl up with your pillow and and that's it and Pisces is the sign of sleep and dreams. But Mars being in its own sign wants to still have that burst of energy and passion. And so one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that there may still be these 
desires to to do things and and take action and all now i didn't want to start my class on mars retrograde i was trying to start it tuesday before mars went retrograde but what i'm starting to find out and what i'm starting to understand and what i believe is going to happen for all of us during the mars retrograde is that we have to go deeper so i'm always talking about going deeper aren't i we need to go deep we need to go deep within and find our passions and if you haven't found your passions if you have been affected job wise from this covid if you've been affected where you had to stop doing something maybe you're supposed to be finding your passion in all of this but the good news is that mars retrograde can help you do that especially in its own sign so that's actually something really positive and we have to find the positivity in this. We don't, we might not have the same amount of energy. We might not want to uh, initiate, but I expect that in my class, we're going to go deep. And I know we're going to go deep. I can see it already. And when this Mars, and now Mars is going to be retrograde for two months, you know, it's like till the 14th or so of November. And that's a long time to not initiate something. And, you know, I'll give you the usual list of things not to initiate. Relationships is one of them. Yeah, you know, new friendships, you know, it'll be okay. But one of the things that's um, perhaps not going to always work out is if you start a new passionate love relationship under a Morris retrograde. You know, it could go on for a long time. Um, you could have, you could start it and it, it goes on, but the car never really gets started. And you don't really find something um, that is um, worth fighting for in the relationship. You and, you know, Mars puts up a fight. If you don't feel like fighting in the relationship, um, you know, and, and maybe the relationship needs a good fight or something, you need to put up a fight a little bit. Maybe that's not when, you know, the time is right to do that. And so sometimes it's really hard to start a relationship. It's always relationships begun under Mars retrograde are like, uh, okay. Well, you know, it, it didn't go anywhere. So sometimes I get clients, like female clients, who say they started something with a guy and then it didn't happen. They don't understand. And I say it's because it started during Mars retrograde. It didn't go anywhere. The car didn't start. Um, and he didn't feel like it, you know. You had to prod him, push him, and, and it wasn't happening um, because we don't push and prod during Mars retrograde. Um, we kind of have to come through the back door a little bit, but men during this time generally don't have all their, all their Marsy energy. None of us do, but this is, it's, uh, this is for men, you know, Mars rules men and the men in our lives. And we all have Mars energy in our charts, but you know, when I look at someone's chart and they're asking about a man, whether no matter who they are, I'm going to look at Mars. And, you know, men, like when Venus goes retrograde, the goddess is out to lunch. Now the gods are out to lunch because Mars is going retrograde. So if you're in a relationship with a man, um, whether you are a man or whether you are a woman or no matter who you are, um, you know, give the guy a break. <laughs> Give the guy a break during this time because they're not, they're, and even if you're dealing with like your brother, your father, your boss, your coworker, your colleague, give the guy a break <laughs> um, because he needs it and it's okay. And Mars doesn't do this very often. It does it once every two years. So it's not oftentimes that we have to deal with this, but the good news is that we are definitely um, not going to stay in this forever. And it, we are definitely seeing the place to go within. Now, if you need to find your inner fight, 
then you go digging for that during this time. If you need to review things in your life, if you need to get your car fixed, if you need to get your computer fixed, if you need to get your electronics fixed, if you need to, um, like I have some friends here who are getting their bikes fixed. Well, it hasn't started yet, but you know, they can't pick them up for a couple days. So it's good to go within and you know what else it's good to do? If you had an exercise program and maybe COVID got in the way or something happened, like people started, you know, people were home. They were eating more, <laughs> you know, they, and people eat to set, to quell nervousness. And if people were anxious or felt anxiousness during this time period, during COVID and get stressed out, people eat. And so this is a really good time to go back to your exercise program. If you don't exercise at all, it's harder to start an exercise program under Mars retrograde, um, a new exercise program. But if you already do an exercise program and maybe it kind of fell by the wayside for a little bit, then you can go back to it and feel stronger again. And that's one of the good things. Maybe you say, well, you know what? I wanted to still lose that 10 pounds. Well, go ahead. Go back to your exercise protocol that you might have given up in these last few months. Get going, get walking, get moving, and you might not feel like it, and that's the other thing. If you already exercise, you're like, I don't want to exercise. Mars, that's Mars retrograde. (laughs) That's a little bit of Mars retrograde where they are, you know, the energies that are the ones that tell us to exercise are not necessarily present. So I invite you to start exercising and giving yourself um, permission to do, get back into the routine of exercise. And that's a really good thing to do during a Mars retrograde. If you already were, if you're trying, you don't, you've never exercised in your life. You've never been like to the gym. You don't go running. You don't do anything. It's going to be a lot harder to start that during the retrograde. You can still do it, but you might give up easier. So Start, start tomorrow, <laughs> before Wednesday, before it goes retrograde. Um, the other thing is, you know, I don't like it. People don't, I don't like telling people like to not do things if they have to do things. But some of the things you don't want to do, one of them is buy a car. One of them is buy a new computer. Like I said, new electronics. The other thing is start a war. If you have to sue someone, unfortunately, if you have to get a divorce, if you have to do something that involves what can can be considered in our modern lifestyle an attack, the wrong thing to do is start it during Mars retrograde. And so the reason for that is because if you initiate an attack during a Mars retrograde, you will not win. Um, you know, it's it and I've had I've mentioned this before on this podcast you know people who want to sue their condo association people who want to sue this or sue that well there was a leak in my apartment and they're not doing anything about it and it has nothing to do it wasn't my fault and blah 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 starting a war with them is not good not good during a Mars retrograde it's just if you can put it off do it if you need to sue start the case before um Wednesday (laughs) if you can do that tomorrow well tomorrow's labor day in the united states but anywhere else where you're listening to this you know if you need to start the war and i hate that i hate saying those words because i think that um people starting a war is never good it's just never good um sometimes to defend yourself is a different matter if you're being attacked and you have to defend yourself because you have been attacked then, you know, that's a different matter. If you've already been attacked and you need to hire a lawyer because there's, there's, you're being attacked, then, because somebody else's lawyer's already gotten you, you know, then Mars retrograde, you've got to do what you've got to do. Um, and I don't, I don't like using the words, well, we lost our war. We started our war. Like I've, I've known people who use those words and it's like, really? You're a human being on this earth. You're not like, are you setting fire to someone's house? Well, what are you doing? You're not taking, like going to war and countries who go to war during Mars retrograde, you know, it's just a bad time. But the people, the, the country that initiates the war, if you know someone that initiates a war, if you're like, oh no, my country's going to war in these next two months, just 
think that it's it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. So that's not something to do. Do not start a war with anyone in your family. Do not start a war with your best friend, your spouse, your dog, <laughs> your cat. Don't start a war with your cat. They, they can they they can be sneaky. Um, <laughs> so so that's my that's my lecture on Mars retrograde as we move forward. And you know the election's going to happen on Mars retrograde during the Mars retrograde in the United States. There's an election. Um, as we move forward through the Mars retrograde, we'll get more information. Now, when retrograde happens, like Venus retrograde or, or you know, Mercury retrograde, especially the truth comes out, especially Mercury retrograde. Mercury's going to retrograde. You know, we're going to have a Mercury retrograde during this Mars retrograde. So we're going to have lots of retrogrades. Mercury will retrograde October 13th, but we don't have to worry about that for a while. We have more than a month and, you know, talk about truths coming out. Truths can really come out then. So let's, let's just kind of keep our heads on straight and Mars rules the head. Aries rules the head on the body. So keep your head on straight. You know, Mercury's going to retrograde in Scorpio, by the way, which is co-ruled by Mars and was traditionally ruled by Mars. So this is going to be a very interesting few months. Okay, what else is going on this week? Well, the sun is busy. The sun, that is our life force, is busy. On Wednesday, when um, Mercury, uh, Mars, sorry, goes retrograde, the sun will trine Jupiter. So now the sun is in Virgo and making very nice, happy aspects to those lovely planets in Capricorn. So one by one, it's first it's Jupiter, then it's Pluto, then it's Saturn. So the first... Um, the first aspect is going to be 12.04 p.m., a trine to Jupiter on Wednesday. So use the sun's light. Use this as enlightenment to open up the ideas around the Jupiter and the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, which is still very present in our lives. Um, use the sun to open your eyes to see to see clearly and and use this energy of the sun in Virgo trying Jupiter and Capricorn to be open to things to open to possibilities open to infinite possibilities Jupiter is infinite possibilities Jupiter is abundance be open to abundance and so be really um, just keep your eyes and ears open you know and be accepting and be loving. The sun trying Jupiter is a great aspect. So, you know, it's nice. Hopefully it's going to soften the Mars retrograde station on Wednesday a little bit, but it's, it's a lovely aspect. So enjoy it. Use it to become enlightened about what your role is during this time, during this Jupiter-Pluto time, during this whole Saturn-Pluto, during this major transition in life, during this end of an era, beginning of a new one. Help yourself to not feel death anxiety. You know, that's the nature of the Saturn-Pluto. That's the nature, and it's spelled out in this pandemic. So really, you know, it's, we all have it to some degree, but Sun trying Jupiter is really something pretty amazing. So when they're talking sweetly to one another, this is great. And I really encourage you to do something do something, maybe treat yourself to something, maybe, you know, and I said beauty earlier, I said beauty with Venus changing signs and Mercury changing signs, there's a lot of beauty, treat yourself to something a little nice this week, do that, we all deserve it, um, so that's one thing, the other thing is that you, the sun is going to oppose Neptune on Friday, which is the 11th, and that's going to be at 4.26 p.m. And so Jupiter and Neptune are the co-rulers of Pisces. So when the sun is in Virgo opposing Neptune, um, you know, back in March or so when, when the sun conjoined Neptune, now we're six months later and we're looking at what we've learned since March. Neptune rules pandemics. Um, March was when everything shut down, really. And so this is, you know, we're going to see how far we've come in these months and see what's next. Okay, so Jupiter is an opening. It's good news. Neptune is showing us something. Be enlightened. Don't put your head in the sand. 
but keep moving and become just do some enlightening things this week do some meditations give yourself some space and um and definitely if you can go walk in nature this because that's what Virgo's about it's that nature goddess go do that that's going to help a whole lot um the other happy news is that Jupiter goes direct on Saturday the 12th. So lots happening Saturday the 12th. My class starts. We're going to be on the podcast, the Past the Lotion podcast. Jupiter goes direct. 6.42 p. No, sorry. I'm looking at the calendar wrong. 8.42 p.m. 6.42 p.m. for me here in Costa Rica. 8.42 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so Jupiter goes direct after being retrograde since around like the middle of May, around the 13th or so of May, Jupiter went retrograde. And now all the work we've done since then is starting to open up. And so the internal stuff we've done, um, you know, all this internal work since May, and now it's September and Jupiter's going direct. Now, this is important for lots of reasons, but, you know, the planet of abundance is going direct. Yay, we're going to feel abundant again. That's one thing. Two, Jupiter's moving forward. That means it's going to meet Pluto again. Okay, so Pluto and Jupiter met when they were both direct April 4th. They met when they were both retrograde the end of June, 30th of June, I think it was, and now they're going to meet again in November, right around the time that Mars goes direct Jupiter and Pluto are going to meet again, and Jupiter is on its way to meet Pluto. So you're going to start getting a sense. If you don't know what that Jupiter-Pluto is about for you, or you had plans and projects based on that Jupiter-Pluto, things are going to start moving forward as of Saturday. Yay! That's great. The other thing is, is Jupiter is eventually going to meet Saturn. Saturn goes direct at the end of the month. Saturn and Jupiter went retrograde the same week in May. So that second week in May was a big one for Saturn and Jupiter and Venus all went retrograde that week. But the experience of Jupiter going first, going to meet Pluto, and then Jupiter is eventually going to meet Saturn in December. And that's lots of big news about that. So stay tuned. We're going to talk a lot about that in the coming months. So Jupiter's busy. Jupiter's getting ready to to move forward. Um, And so... This is, there's lots going on in the heavens. It's never a dull week anymore, is it? No, not at all. Um, Because Jupiter and Pluto are the manifestation, the wish, you know, the the big transformation. If you don't know what your big transformation is, or you do know, this is a time to look back at these months since May and say, where have I transformed? Where have I opened? Jupiter is an opening. Where have I opened? And so... It's important to review these months and see how you've grown and what you've done and what you've accomplished. Jupiter is going to meet Pluto again for the last time for the next 13 years, 12, 13 years. And so take advantage of this. Use this big, bright Jupiter energy to move forward on, on your dreams, on the things that you love, on the things that you're, can, you've been working on, on where you've opened yourself in in this during this time you know there may be things that you discovered about yourself and i hope you did um that you i i really hope you did discover something new about yourself during this COVID time you know it was we were being provided with an opportunity we are being provided with an opportunity to find ourselves anew in this time so I hope that Jupiter's going direct next Saturday brings a wonderful surprise to you and that you find something, you realize something about yourself that you might have been doing all these months and how important it is um, to your life now. And it might not have been something that was revealed to you until uh, recently. So until this COVID. So we have gratitude. We always should have gratitude. Jupiter's going direct, have gratitude. Um, Amazing. So... And then let's see. So the moon is now in Taurus. It's been in Taurus all day. Tomorrow it's going to conjunct Uranus, but it's going to be 2 a.m. So it'll be uh, Eastern time. It'll be midnight here. A little excitable energy. Um, And it's going to make some, you know, we've got some nice things going on. The sun and uh, So this is, this is, we've got a happy grand trine in earth going because the moon is going to trine the sun and then trine Jupiter. Um, 
tomorrow, the 7th, and all afternoon. And what's great about this is like the, the sun is really moving into its trine with Jupiter that it's going to make exact on Wednesday. So the moon in Taurus, the sun in Virgo, Jupiter in Capricorn are making a grand trine. Isn't that's a great, great aspect. So you, these next couple days, enjoy that. A grand earth trine, fantastic. Great to get things accomplished and manifest. Do it. Um, then the moon goes void on Tuesday, 8.46 a.m. Eastern time. It is void all day <laughs> to 5.28 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And it goes into Gemini where it remains you know, for the remainder of Tuesday, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and really, like, clear all those days. And so it goes void at, you know, 10 to 1 in the morning, Friday a.m., and then goes into Cancer at 4.23 a.m. Eastern. So it's in Cancer Saturday, uh, the 12th, and it's in Cancer all day, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, it goes void at 8.05 a.m. in Cancer and goes into Leo at 11.32 a.m. This is all Eastern time, so good. Um, Leo, fiery, great with, you know, the moon is going to be with Venus on the following Monday, and so we've got, you know, use this grand trine in Earth to manifest something. Think about what you want to manifest, and but, you know, the happiness is with Jupiter going direct, it's, it should be, you know, Mars is going retrograde, yes, but we've got some other really good supportive aspects going on. So pay attention. Pay attention to what happens this week and use this energy to your advantage. And that's about it. I invite you to join my class. Um, please look at my website. And you can join there. Um, the link is also on my Instagram bio. My Instagram is Golden Astrologer, and I do regular videos about astrology on my Instagram. And my Twitter is at Deb Astrology. And my podcast is distributed where all podcasts are distributed. Um, and my uh, email is info at thegoldenastrologer.com if you'd like to email me, but you can book a session online right on my website, The Golden Astrologer. I wish you a beautiful week. Enjoy this great Jupiterian week. Uh, just keep your eye on Mars. And I am grateful for all of you. Thank you. And I'll see you next week. Have a good week.